Albius Tibullus, c. 55 BC to 19 BC, was a Latin poet and writer of elegies. His first and second books of poetry are extant. Many other texts attributed to him are of questionable origins. Little is known about the life of Tibullus. There are only a few references to him by later writers and a short life of doubtful authority. Neither his prenomen nor his birthplace is known, and his gentile name has been questioned. His status was probably that of a Roman equi, so the life affirms, and he had inherited a considerable estate. Like Virgil, Horace and Propertius, he seems to have lost most of it in 41 BC in the confiscations of Mark Antony and Octavian. Scholar Francis Cairns regards Tibullus as a good poet but not a great one. Dorothea Wender similarly calls him a minor poet but argues there is grace and polish and symmetry to his work. Life Tibullus's chief friend and patron was Marcus Valerius Massala Corvinus, himself an orator and poet as well as a statesman and a commander. Massala, like Gaius Messinus, was at the center of a literary circle in Rome. This circle had no relationship with the court, and the name of Augustus is found nowhere in the writings of Tibullus. About 30 BC Massala was dispatched by Augustus to Gaul to quell a rising in Aquitania and restore order in the country, and Tibullus may have been in his retinue. On a later occasion, probably in 28, he would have accompanied his friend who had been sent on a mission to the east, but he fell sick and had to stay behind in Corsaira. Tibullus had no liking for war, and though his life seems to have been divided between Rome and his country estate, his own preferences were wholly for the country life. The loss of Tibullus's landed property is attested by himself. I.1.19, as a farmer, Felices quandum, nuinc pauperis agri, of a once fruitful, now impoverished field. Cf. 41, 42. Its cause is only an inference, though a very probable one. That he was allowed to retain a portion of his estate with the family mansion is clear from E.453. Tibullus may have been Massala's contubernalis in the Aquitanian War, Vita Tib, and Tib. I.7, 9 Seq, a poem composed for Massala's triumph, and may have received Dona Militaria. Vita Tib. Tibullus died prematurely, probably in 19, and almost immediately after Virgil. His death made a deep impression in Rome, as is clear from his contemporary, Domitius Marsus, and from the elegy in which Ovid Amores, e. enshrined the memory of his predecessor. <laughs> Extant works <laughs> <laughs> First book of poetry Tibullus's first book consists of poems written at various times between 30 and 26. His first love, the subject of Book I, is called Delia in the poems, but Apuleius Apol. 10 reveals that her real name was Plania. As regards her station, it should be noticed that she was not entitled to wear the stola, the dress of Roman matrons I, 6, Her husband is mentioned as absent I, 2, Seq. She eludes the custodes placed over her I, 2, 15 and 6, 7. Tibullus's suit was favored by Delia's mother, of whom he speaks in very affectionate terms I, 6, 57 Seq. For Tibullus's illness at Corsaira, ci. 3, I Seq, 55 Seq. The fifth elegy was written during estrangement discidium, and the sixth after the return of the husband and during Delia's double infidelity. It is impossible to give an exact account of the intimacy. The poems which refer to her are arranged in no chronological order. Sometimes she appears as single, sometimes as married, but we hear nothing either of her marriage or of her husband's death. Yet it is clear that it was the absence of her husband on military service in Cilicia which gave Tibullus the opportunity to see her, and he continued to do so when the husband returned. Delia was clever in deception. Too clever, as Tibullus saw when he found that he was not the only lover. His entreaties and appeals were of no avail, and after the first book no more is heard of Delia. In addition, several elegies in Book I concern themselves with Tibullus's love for a boy, who is named Marathus. Topic. Second book of poetry About the second book, scholars can only say that in all likelihood it was published before the poet's death in 19 BC. It is very short, containing only 428 verses, and apparently incomplete. In the second book the place of Delia is taken by Nemesis, which is also a fictitious name. 
Nemesis like the Cynthia of Propertius, was probably a courtesan of the higher class, and she had other admirers besides Tibullus. He complains bitterly of his bondage, and of her rapacity and hard-heartedness. In spite of all, however, she seems to have retained her hold on him until his death. Ovid, writing at the time of Tibullus's death, says Amores e.9, 31-32. Sic nemesis longum, sic delia nomen habibant, altera cura recens, altera primus amor. Thus nemesis and delia will be long remembered, one Tibullus recent love, the other his first. Nemesis is the subject of Book E.3, 4, 6. The mention of Auna e. settles her position. The connection had lasted a year when E.5 was written. C. Veer. 109. It is worth noticing that Martial selects Nemesis as the source of Tibullus's reputation v.737, cf. xiv.193. <laughs> Style of writing Though the character of Tibullus the historical man is unclear, the character of his poetic persona is reflected in his works. He was an amiable man of generous impulses and unselfish disposition, loyal to his friends to the verge of self-sacrifice as is shown by his leaving Delia to accompany Masala to Asia, and apparently constant to his mistresses. His tenderness towards them is enhanced by a refinement and delicacy which are rare among the ancients. When treated cruelly by his love, he does not invoke curses upon her head. Instead he goes to her little sister's grave, hung so often with his garlands and wet with his tears, to bemoan his fate. His ideal is a quiet retirement in the country with the loved one at his side. He has no ambition and not even a poet's yearning for immortality. In an age of crude materialism and gross superstition, he was religious in the old Roman way. His clear, finished and yet unaffected style made him a great favorite and placed him, in the judgment of Quintilian, ahead of other elegiac writers. For natural grace and tenderness, for exquisiteness of feeling and expression, he stands alone. He rarely overloads his lines with Alexandrian learning. However, his range is limited. Tibullus is smoother and more musical, but liable to become monotonous. Propertius, with occasional harshnesses, is more vigorous and varied. In many of Tibullus's poems a symmetrical composition can be traced. Specimens of Tibullus at his best may be found in I. I. 3, 89-94, 5, 19-36, 9, 45-68, e. 6. Quintilian says Institutio Oratoria X. I. 93. Elegia quoque Gricos provocamus, quius mihi tersis at qui elegans maxim vidutur octor tibulus, sunt qui propertium malint, avidus utroc lascivior, secut derior gallus. In elegy as well we rival the Greeks, of whom for me the author Tibullus seems the most polished and elegant, there are those who prefer Propertius, Ovid is more wanton than either, just as Gallus is more stern. Topic. Questionable attributions Some of the genuine poems of Tibullus have been lost. On the other hand, much of the work attributed to him is that of others. Only the first and second books can uncontroversially claim his authorship. In both books occur poems which give evidence of internal disorder, but scholars cannot agree upon the remedies to be applied. Topic. Third book of poetry The third book, which contains 290 verses, is by a much inferior hand. The writer calls himself Ligdamus and the love that he sings of Neira. He has little poetical power, and his style is meager and jejun. He has a good many reminiscences and imitations of Tibullus, Propertius and Ovid e. 5, 15 and Ovid, A. Ars, Am. E. 669 Seq, Tr, I. V. 10, 6, and Am, She. 14, 23 Seq, and they are not always happy. It is unknown when his poems were added to the genuine poems of Tibullus. Topic. Fourth book of poetry The separation of the fourth book from the third has no ancient authority. It dates from the revival of letters, and is due to the Italian scholars of the 15th century. The fourth book consists of poems of very different quality. The first is a composition in 211 hexameters on the achievements of Masala, and is very poor. The author is unknown, but he was certainly not Tibullus. 
The poem itself was written in 31, the year of Masala's consulship. The next eleven poems relate to the loves of Sulpicia and Sarinthus. Sulpicia was a Roman lady of high station and, according to Moritz Haupt's conjecture, the daughter of Valeria, Masala's sister. The Sulpicia elegies divide into two groups. The first comprises IV. 2-6, containing 94 lines, in which the theme of the attachment is worked up into five graceful poems. The second, IV. 8-12, consists of Sulpicia's own letters. They are very short, only 40 lines in all, but they have a unique interest as being the only love poems by a Roman woman that have survived. Their frank and passionate outpourings remind us of Catullus. The style and metrical handling betray a novice in poetical writing. The thirteenth poem 24 lines, claims to be by Tibullus, but it is hardly more than a cento from Tibullus and Propertius. The fourteenth is a little epigram of four lines with nothing to determine its authorship. Last of all comes the epigram or fragment of Domitius Marsus already referred to, some scholars attribute e. 8-12 iv. 2 to 6 to Tibullus himself, but the style is different, and it is best to answer the question, as Byron's does, with a non liquette The direct ascription of E. 19 IV. 13 verse 13. Nuinc licit e calo mititor amica Tibullo. Now grant that a lover be sent from heaven to Tibullus. To Tibullus probably led to its inclusion in the collection and later on to the addition of the third book to the two genuine ones. For the evidence against the ascription, see Postgate, Selections, App. C. To sum up, the third and fourth books appear in the oldest tradition as a single book, and they comprise pieces by different authors in different styles, none of which can be assigned to Tibullus with any certainty. The natural conclusion is that a collection of scattered compositions, relating to Masala and the members of his circle, was added as an appendix to the genuine relics of Tibullus. When this Masala collection was made cannot be exactly determined, but it was definitely not till after the death of Tibullus, 19 BC, and perhaps as late as the late 1st century AD. Besides the foregoing, two pieces in the collection called Priapeia one an epigram and the other a longer piece in iambics have been attributed to Tibullus, but there is little external and no internal evidence of his authorship see Hiller in Hermes, XVIII. 343-349, Charisius pp. 66 and 105, quotes part of a hexameter which is not found in the extant poems of Tibullus. The Vita Tibulli The value of the short Vita Tibulli, found at the end of the Ambrosian, Vatican and inferior manuscripts, has been much discussed. There is little in it that we could not infer from Tibullus himself and from what Horace says about Albius, though it is possible that its compiler may have taken some of his statements from Suetonius's book De Poetis. It is another moot question of some importance whether our poet should be identified with the Albius of Horace odd, I. 33, Epist, I. 4, as is done by the Horatian commentator Pomponius Porphyrian AD 200-250 in his Sholia. Porfirio's view was examined by Postgate Selections from Tibullus, Appendix A. Topic. Manuscripts The best manuscript of Tibullus is the Ambrosianus A, which has been dated c. 1375, whose earliest known owner was the humanist Coluccio Salutati. Two early 15th-century manuscripts are Paris lot. 7989 written in Florence in 1423 and the Vatican Miz. Otto, lot. 1202 also written in Florence, 1426. These form only a small share of the over 100 Renaissance manuscripts. There are also a number of extracts from Tibullus in Florilegium Gallicum, an anthology from various Latin writers collected in the mid-12th century, and a few extracts in the Excerpta Frisingentia, preserved in a manuscript now at Munich. Also excerpts from the Lost Fragmentum Quiescianum, made by Scaliger, and now in the library at Leiden are of importance for their independence of A. It contained the part from 3.4.65 to the end, useful as fragments go as the other manuscripts lack 3.4.65. The Codex Quiescianus, a late manuscript containing Catullus, Tibullus and Propertius, is still extant. Topic. Editions 
Tibullus was first printed with Catullus, Propertius, and the Sylvie of Statius by Vindelinus de Spira Venice, 1472, and separately by Florentius de Argentina, probably in the same year. Amongst other editions are those by Scaliger with Catullus and Propertius, 1577, etc., Brucutius, 1708, Volpus, 1749, Hain, 1817, Fourth Ed. by Wunderlich, with supplement by Disson, 1819, Hushke, 1819, Lachman, 1829, Disson, 1835. Among more modern editions, Emil Behrens 1878, the first of the modern critical editions, has outlived his contemporaries Lucian Muller 1870, Edward Hiller 1885, and John Percival Postgate 1905. Guy Lee's edition and translation of books 1 to 2, Cambridge 1975, is based on a fresh collation of A of the commentaries. Haynes and Hushkey's are still of value. The greater part of the poems are included in Postgate selections with English notes, 1903. A history of later contributions is given in Augustin Cartalt's A Propos du Corpus Tibullianum, 1906, not quite complete. See also his Tibble et les auteurs du Corpus Tibullianum, Paris, 1909. For further information, see the accounts in Tufel's History of Roman Literature, translated by War, Martin Schanz's Geschichte der Romischen Literatur, and F. Marx's article S. V. Albius in Pauli Wissawa's Real Encyclopedie. Notes References This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Postgate, John Percival 1911. Tibullus, Albius. In Chisholm, Hugh. Encyclopædia Britannica. 26 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 930-931. <laughs> Further reading Bowditch, P. L. Tibullus and Egypt, a postcolonial reading of Elegy 1.7. Arethusa, 44, 2011, pp. 89-122. Bright, Dfhaec Mihi Fingabam, Tibullus and His World. Leiden, Brill, 1978. Cairns, Francis. Tibullus, a Hellenistic poet at Rome. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1979. Damer, E. Z. Gender Reversals and Intertextuality in Tibullus. Classical World 107 2014, pp. 493-514. Geyser, J. H. Amor, Rura and Militia in Three Elegies of Tibullus, 1.1, 1 1.5, 1 1.10, 1 Latimus 42 1983, pp. 58-72. Houghton, L. B. T. Tibullus Elegiac Underworld. Classical Quarterly, 57, 2007, pp. 153-165. James, S. Learned Girls and Male Persuasion, Gender and Reading in Roman Love Elegy. Berkeley, University of California Press, 2003. Miller, P. A. Subjecting Verses, Latin Love Elegy and the Emergence of the Real. Princeton, Princeton University Press, 2004. Nicolutsos, K. From Tomb to Womb, Tibullus 1.1 and the Discourse of Masculinity in Post-Civil War Rome. Scholia, Natal Studies in Classical Antiquity, 20 2011, pp. 52-71. Ray, David. What Poets Do, Tibullus on Easy Hands. Classical Philology, 98 2003, pp. 217-250. Topic. External links Works by Tibullus at Perseus Digital Library The Elegies of Tibullus at the Latin Library Works by Tibullus at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Tibullus at Internet Archive Works by Tibullus at Open Library Selections from Tibullus, translated, with an introduction, notes, and glossary by John Corellis.